bonjour ciao and welcome to the study tube project i hope you guys have been enjoying the videos we've given to you so far and are looking forward to what we've got planned for you next in this video i wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the human body the focus being our hands we use our hands every day and a lot of us use our hands without even thinking about it too much so i wonder how much you really know about these amazing tools Plus, I'll even explain some interesting medical terms throughout the video. The skeleton of our hands is comprised of 27 bones. 27 bones? That's a lot. The bones that make up our wrists are called carpal bones, and there's eight of them. They are arranged in two rows. A proximal row, which is closest to you, and a distal row, which is further away. The main purpose of these bones is to connect the hand to the forearm and to enable movements as so. Now, if I turn my hands over, I'll show you what each of these carpal bones are, and I've labelled them for you so you can see it more clearly. The carpal bones of a proximal row are scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, otherwise known as triquetral, and pisiform. I'll say that again. Scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, otherwise known as triquetral, and pisiform. The carpal bones of the distal row are trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. And again, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. Why don't you try and identify the bones of the rest on your own hands? Have a feel for your scaphoid bone, which is the largest bone in the proximal row. Maybe even hamate, which has a little hook. Have a go at trying to find pisiform, which is a small round bone above triquetrum it'll feel like a little bump. Cool, right? Now, I'm gonna try and say all the bones of the rest again, so try and see if you can remember their arrangement with me. So, in the proximal row, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform. In the distal row, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. And that's the carpal bones done. The remaining bones of the hand are a little easier to remember, there are five metacarpal bones which articulate with the bones of the wrist. This simply means that they are joined. There is a metacarpal bone for each digit and they are labelled one to five, with one being your thumb and five being your pinky finger. So one, two, three, four and five. And that's it for the metacarpal bones. And finally, we have 14 phalanges, which make up our fingers and thumb. Every digit, except for your thumb, has three phalanges. They are named according to their position. Proximal, middle, and distal. In case you forgot, proximal means closest to you, and distal means furthest from you. And middle, well, middle means middle. Your thumb only has two phalanges, proximal and distal. And yeah, that's it for the phalanges. Now, let's run through everything together one last time. I know it's a lot, but feel free to go back and refresh your memory. So first we have the eight carpal bones, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform. Then we have trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. Secondly, the metacarpal bones, labelled one, two, three, four, and five. And lastly, the phalanges, of which there are 14, the proximal, middle and distal phalanges in your four fingers, and then just the proximal and distal phalanges in your thumb. Well, there you have it, the bones that make up the hand. There are a lot of things that can actually happen to these bones if you aren't too careful, including a fracture, you know, if you fall hands first. The scaphoid bone is usually the most injured. There are also a couple of conditions associated with the bones of the hand, including carpal tunnel syndrome. This is when you start feeling a little tingly sensation in your hands and maybe even a little bit of pain or even a little slight weakness in your hands too. However, it's important to note that the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome don't always follow after a specific injury. Of course, there is so much more to discuss about the hand, but for now, that's it. And I wanted to give you guys a little taste as to why I think the anatomy is so amazing. Feel free to do a little bit of research in your own time and maybe even leave a comment below about what you found the most interesting. But for now, I guess I've helped you, you know, get to know each other on the inside. 
Thank you so much for watching this video on the Study 2 project. If you want to see more from me, head over to my own channel, which is just Tolu Duckworth, so you can find some more details about how I'm finding it as a medical student at the University of Oxford. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!